down in the park with a friend named Five, Gary Newman. It's been an interesting ride since the 80s. I drove to California in a 1972 Westphalia in the fall of 1985. about $2,200 in my pocket. Broke down a couple times on the way. Eventually I made it here. It's kind of ironic to me sitting here in the park thinking about leaving California in a Westphalia. 2011. It's not all glamorous. You know, it's exciting, it's romantic, but uh, sometimes I think uh, Sometimes I think I need my head examined traveling around in a almost 30 year old vehicle. Yeah, you know, the 72 in 1985, it wasn't that old, but there's none of these cars on the interstates, you know, there's none of these vans. It's getting ready to leave this weekend. Now the passenger window doesn't roll up. It's like the uh, the window regulator has let go. So I'm just relaxing at the park. It's, it's about 95 degrees today in Los Angeles. And I thought it'd be a good idea to just relax before I meet this final challenge. I'm not a rich guy, you know counting every 10 bucks I spend so I'm gonna try and fix that regulator not buy another one and for for people that uh, you know romanticize about traveling the world in their their van whatever van it might be before you leave home you need to have at least five or six thousand dollars under your belt. Ten thousand would be even better. You don't know what's gonna happen. Had a axle go bad, had an engine go bad, had the accelerator break on me just as I rolled into my buddy's driveway. And uh Geez, there was one other thing I forget, but uh, you, you know, you can only prepare with a small P. You can't prepare with a capital P. But you never know what's going to happen. So you need to have uh, funds set aside. You know, you can you can make money on the road. You know, you can buy and sell things. You can do odd jobs. You can. You know, I'm a lot of things, you know, I got a lot of different trades besides being a mechanic. And I've been making money, but uh, it ain't all romantic all the time. You know, you're definitely living on the edge. And uh, there's been times when I had seven bucks to my name on this trip. And there's been times when I had several thousand dollars and uh, today I was calculating the price of fuel how many miles it is how many miles to the gallon I can get and I'm thinking it's going to cost me about four hundred and fifty dollars worth of fuel to get to where I need to go 
and looking at my budget, uh, I'm glad I bought that uh, that big case of tuna. I don't know, was it two months ago? Time flies. So this is probably a video I put up on uh, the 777 Underground. It was I tried calling Scott earlier. Not sure if Scott wants to go on the road again, but uh, you know, I gave him a phone call. Let's see if he wants to go. Uh, the tricky thing uh, <laughs> when we were rolling into California. Uh, when was it? Yeah, it was, I think it was November 19th. We rolled into uh, California and we were literally counting our pennies. <laughs> we were counting our pennies. Uh, <laughs> Scott found some chocolate bars on sale at a gas station for like 10 cents each and he bought 10 of them for a dollar. He's like, I got food, man. I got food. <laughs> It's literally been that kind of trip, you know, the, you, you, you do good and then you're just barely hanging on. So I'm, I'm not sure if it would benefit Scott to come on the road again. <laughs> he might be better off staying where he is, but Scott, if you want to come along uh, and head back east again, uh, you're welcome to give it a go. We'll see what happens. See if we make it, see if it, uh, hopefully it won't break down. It's certainly uh, an interesting adventure. An interesting adventure, to say the least. The road less traveled, my friends. We'll see what happens.